There's a fire kindling all across this place. Some call it a movement. Some call it an awakening. Others call it a deception. This is the story of the Hebrew Roots Movement, told by those who are part of it. Those who have somehow found themselves inside one of the most misunderstood groups of people in recent history. This is a story about faith, clarity, and misconceptions. Over the past decade, there have been large numbers of people who have left their Christian churches of every denomination on a global scale. Some call it a great exodus from the doctrines of men. Who are these people? Why are they abandoning the churches that they were saved in? Why are they abandoning what they've been taught in their very faiths? Are they being deceived? Are they being misled? What is so powerful that is causing these former Christians, Jews, Catholics, Mormons, the list goes on and on. What in the world is driving this movement? We are going to talk to people inside the Hebrew Roots Movement, as well as those outside of this movement. We're going to talk to Hebrew Roots, Christians, Jews, and a few others. By the end of this film, we will finally expose the truth behind the Hebrew Roots Movement. Today, there are over 30,000 Christian denominations scattered throughout the world. Most of these denominations were developed based on misunderstandings of the writings of one man, Paul. 100% of these denominational doctrines are based on the ideas of men. This means that all of these doctrines are false. Most of these doctrines teach that the words of the Father and the writings of the Old Testament do not apply to us today, when, in fact, this idea is never prophesied about or mentioned in these scriptures. Most people that find themselves inside the Hebrew Roots movement were led there on an independent path. They often spend years in the Christian church, but still seeking truth because of all of the nonsense that the Christian church teaches. Today, we live in a culture of too much everything. We, alongside our children, are entrenched so deep in the here and now. We are constantly flooded with images and audio of sex, paganistic symbolism, violence, and are only concerned with what supposedly feels good. We are so self-consumed with sin and have found ourselves so far gone from our Heavenly Father, most of us will never return to Him. Most Christians have no concept of sin or why Christ came. We have been lied to about so many things by the church that we do not even stop to identify the simple definitions of our own language. Most Christians cannot even accurately define simple terms such as sin, holiness, righteousness, wickedness, or the word fulfill. Hebrews can define these terms, but Christians refuse to abide by the meanings of these words. This is one of the clear delineations between the two. First and foremost, the most important thing that these people have figured out is that God's word is the standard. It takes precedent over everything else. Next, the word of Christ. Next, the word of the prophets, and then the word of the disciples. God's word is above all else. If all of these things do not line up perfectly, whatever does not line up with God's word, Christ's word, and the prophets must be re-examined. If it still does not line up, then it must be cast aside. There can be no other way. There is no exception to this rule. A big movement and a lot of people are leaving churches because they they are realizing that uh, the church lost the intimacy with God the relationship that 
should be there but it's not and churches are run like business and so they just wanna have something else something more something more more meaningful and that's what we found in this in this movement that we found the truth and uh, the love that he has for us and we want to share this this relationship the, the intimacy with him to us it was awakening we uh, we were so excited to to learn and we wanted to share with everybody what we learn the new things what we learn and uh, to our surprise a lot of them a lot of people were not interested a lot of people just walk away didn't want to didn't want to learn we're not interested how would uh, how would one join this movement to us it was uh, Holy Spirit leading us to this uh, awakening to this movement and to search for more and more truth so he has to lead you the Holy Spirit has to lead you there's no way that people could change your mind unless it's the Holy Spirit doing it What would I say for people who tell me that I'm misled or I'm on the wrong path? That they need to be careful when I can give scripture that shows exactly what I'm doing from what we know in Torah and how that's reflected in what we know in the Second Testament or the New Testament and how, um, how there's specific... Um, how there are specific scriptures that, that say don't go don't tell somebody who's doing good that they're doing evil don't do it how has coming to truth affected my relationships well, I would say this is a two-part. There's a two-part answer to this. First, I have brothers and sisters left in the Christian church who are still listening to the pastor and following what he has learned from the seminaries and what he's trying to teach them based on his limited knowledge on that. So there's them. And I am trying, with the Father's help, to be more compassionate and understanding and loving and patient and it can be hard at times because we're all human beings. But with that, you know, just trying to help them, you know, at any opportunity given to shed some more light on the truth and to challenge them to be Bereans like scripture tells us to be and to start searching it out for themselves and not base it on what their pastor alone is saying. Um, so that's that side and trying to just deal compassionately with them and not judging them and being harsh and cut off from them because that's not going to reach them either. Um, on the other side, we've got our fellow brothers and sisters who Abba has graciously allowed us to find each other and it's just been amazing. Those who believe the same way because it's been from Him. and. Understanding that you know it's affected my relationships with them as far as hey let's pursue truth together let's um, observe his Sabbath together let's come together for his feasts and be able to celebrate those and joy and understanding now that we know what they are we're just thrilled to death with that and um, also continuing to push push each other to pursue his truth at all costs his truth not the truth that we thought we knew but his truth. The truth that they speak of is the Word of the Father. 
these people have been called out individually and independently led to drop the doctrines of men and listen to his voice and study his words. Now that these people have found themselves studying God's words and his everlasting instructions, they have found true freedom in the word of God. Many of these people have been praying for their eyes to be opened and to be led by the Father, and he has answered those prayers. What brought me to the Hebrew Roots Movement? Well, I was 50 years old when, when it happened. Uh, I had been Mormon for a long time, and before that I was raised Roman Catholic and very strict family. At, at 50 years old, I had finally had enough of man's religions, and I had decided that I would not do that ever, ever again. I believe that's a, it's a movement for, for the way of life we were supposed to have. Um, in the Christian churches, we're more often than not, not exposed to Hebrew roots of any type. Uh, in fact, we are, we are turned away from those, especially in churches that have a very strict uh, guidance by a hierarchy in the in the church um, I grew up believing or feeling guilty about everything that I did I had a, I always had an abiding faith in the Messiah and the Lord but I I always felt that I was I was wanting and uh, in the churches I would I would look at other people and I say, well, why am I not like him? Why do I have all kinds of problems following the laws and the rules and, and understanding what I'm supposed to be doing? And what I finally discovered when I was 50 years old is that I wasn't going to put up with that garbage anymore. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, realized at that time that it wasn't a church of man, it was a church of God. And that I should be following his word, whatever that is, and I should not be more concerned about what people are telling me that I should be doing. But at that time, I, I didn't know anything about Hebrew roots. I didn't know anything really about the Torah. I mean, I, I understood what the Torah was, that it, the five books of Moses and so on. I knew those things intellectually, but I didn't know them spiritually or in my heart. It was about two or three in the morning, our jaws were on the floor because we knew what we were hearing was in fact true. We knew that these were the things that we had been looking for all our lives and were never exposed to them. What Mark Biltz did was he connected the dots for us. He helped us, helped us find the Torah, helped us understand that the commandments are not too difficult, that the commandments are not difficult at all, that the Lord gave us something that was purely and simply common sense which unfortunately in today's society around the world and in today's churches around the world is not very common anymore. Common sense went away. If we lost anything on the cross or if we gained anything, we lost it afterwards. The Torah is coming back in a big way and not in the way of man, not in the way of the Pharisees, not in the way of the bishops, not in the way of the popes, not in the way of anything. We are, the Torah and the commandments of, the, of Heavenly Father are coming back from Him.
Many of the people who find themselves in the Messianic Hebrew Roots movement have been called out by the Father. These people are part of a mass awakening that they cannot ignore. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, himself said, I have not come for the Jew or the Gentile, but for the lost sheep of Israel. As we know, all but two tribes were cast out and scattered into the world among the so-called nations. The prophets talk about these people being awakened in the last days and how they will be scoffed at for coming back to the Father's word and for following his instructions. So why is it that all of a sudden, Christian people have some kind of burning in their innermost being for Hebraic things? How does that happen? His people have been scattered to the winds because of their idolatry. We're told that they would forget who they were, that he would lead them to worship their idols. But at the end of time, there would come a time when people would wake up they would remember who they were. They would remember their ancestry and come back to the Torah. And so there's a time when the Father has allowed us to remember. And that's just kind of maybe had a veil over that before, but now we're remembering who we are. And whether we're literal seed or we're just grafted in, we're all treated the same. Oftentimes, people will sit in their churches week after week and listen to the things that their pastor spoon feeds them. For some of those people, this gets harder and harder to do with each passing week because something inside them is tugging at them to wake up. Often, when this awakening begins to occur, these people can be left completely overwhelmed and may feel even more lost at first. However, as their eyes are opened, their path becomes clear and their freedom is finally revealed. What brought me to the Hebrew Roots life? My bride and I were watching Daystar, and uh, we came across a television show program called Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and we had not heard of that before, so we watched it, and they taught the Bible on that television show so much different from what we'd ever heard or seen. We literally jump to our feet and say, "We, why aren't they teaching this in our church? Why aren't they teaching this in other churches? So it was really quite um, a moving experience for us in a growing understanding on the beginning of our faith. What brought me to the Hebrew Roots life? Uh, I grew up in a Christian home and I've always been very interested in finding myself in my faith and finding truth and finding, uh, what, finding out what my relationship with the Lord should look like. And I've been on this journey for most of my life trying to find out how I can serve God and how I can please Him and how I can live according to what he's told me to live by 
but I've never actually been fulfilled. I've done everything basically that we're told to do in the church. I've read my Bible every day, I've prayed every night, but I came to a point in my life where I realized nothing I was doing was actually reaping the fruit that I was reading about in the Bible. So uh, one person introduced me to uh, what truth is in the Hebrew Roots movement and I realized that that's what I was looking for. I realized that this was the expression of faith that Jesus modeled in, in his walk in this earth. So coming to that, I realized that this is what I was meant to live for. <laughs> Would I consider it an awakening? Yes, I would, because I've lived my life so long thinking that I was doing the right thing and then not really living from the truth that I've, I've always been called to, but never really knowing what that was. So now that I know what it is, which is so simple, it's just the word of God, um, I would consider it an awakening because it's been made so easy for me to live for him. I think the most important thing that I've discovered is to trust in my personal relationship with Yeshua. Uh, we learn so much in the church, but it all comes from the pastor. And we've, we've been living life based on someone else's beliefs and not our own. One of the most important lessons that I've learned is that I'm accountable for the lessons that Yahweh has shown to me and not for the lessons that a man has imposed upon me. Uh, I've learned to talk to him more. I've learned to listen to him more. I've learned to read the Bible for myself more and to take to heart his words and to take responsibility for the life that he's given me and not blame it on other people and not blame it on my church if I'm not doing well, or blame it on my friends, or blame it on my pastor, but to actually take responsibility for my relationship with Yahweh. Is this movement from God or from something else? I firmly believe that it's from God. Um, he's led me to a lot of truths and showed me a lot of areas where I thought I was right and I wasn't. He's answered a lot of questions that I had that people said couldn't be answered. And I feel more freedom now than I've ever felt before. If you would like more information on what we believe, some good resources I recommend are El Shaddai, 119 Ministries, and Torah family. I also recommend, in addition to those sources, having multiple versions of the Bible open to ensure the correct translation is being used. Blue Letter Bible is a good resource that I use. The fact is, anyone who finds themselves following a doctrine or a teaching that conflicts with the Father's words need to reassess what they believe. Today, everything that the Church teaches is opposite of what the Father has taught us. Everything from Holy Days, Christians believe that man-made Holy Days are important, but that the Father's appointed times, Holy Days, feasts, are not important. They believe the commandments are not important, but their own doctrines and ideologies are important. All of these things that the Christian church teaches today have been prophesied about. First off, the proper definition for the word holy in the Hebrew sense means to be set apart. As children of God, we are expected, we are commanded to be set apart from the rest of the world and not become part of it. We are not to mix our culture, his culture, 
with the culture of nations. The truth that they speak of is the word of the Father. These people have been called out individually and independently led to drop the doctrines of men and listen to his voice and study his words. Now that these people have found themselves studying God's words and his everlasting instructions, they have found true freedom in the word of God. Many of these people have been praying for their eyes to be opened and to be led by the Father, and he has answered those prayers. Israel came out of Egypt with a multitude of people. More than two and a half million human beings were eventually grafted into the people of Israel. This includes 600,000 Israeli men, in addition to the women and children. Add this to the mixed multitude and the number of people is likely two and a half million. These are people that could hear the voice of the Father and responded whenever they heard his voice. Eventually, they cried out and begged to no longer hear his voice and appointed Moses to be their emissary to the Father. Then, the Father told them that he would eventually send them a prophet like Moses, a prophet who speaks the words of the Father. Who are these people? The answer is actually pretty simple and easy to understand. These people are Hebrews. They are the lost sheep of Israel who have been scattered among the nations until his time to call them back. They simply believe that his words take precedent over everything else and all other biblical texts must line up with his words. These people have come to the realization that scripture and God's word is not open to interpretation. It doesn't matter what it means to us. It only matters what it means to him. The single most important message in this film is for people to understand that we were not created for our own sake. We were created to glorify the Father and we cannot glorify the Father unless we love the Father the way he tells us that he wants to be loved. So, what does all of this really mean? What is this movement? And who are these people? These are ordinary people who simply believe that the Father's word is forever and they choose to love him the way he asks them to love him. These people understand and accept who Christ is and why we need him. He is the living, breathing Word of the Father. We need to follow the Word of the Father if we truly love Him. It is not about us. It has never been about us. It is and always will be about Him. Shalom.